loop, right? <laughs> I'm sure there's a loop up there. Uh, uh, there are a lot of, yeah, oh, that's right. The loop is in Chicago, I'm told, for the truck. I should know that. I live there. I know that guy. Got to go there tomorrow. Here comes Jones. Iowa on the attack. Trailing by 15. Gary Wright. Away from the ball. Contact man, Altenberger. Guilty of the foul and doesn't know why. Well, the whistles are beginning to blow a little bit more now. Um, I don't know. a little tighter, you're right, than they were earlier in the game. Especially away from the ball. Well, play, uh, I think the roughness and intensity of play uh, has picked up from a contact standpoint. I think the first half, maybe the pace was a little bit quicker, but now as players get a little bit more, a little tighter, the contact is a little more aggressive. Roy Marble with five second half points, only seven points in the game. He averages 15.7 points a contest overall. Two out of two at the line for Roy Marble. Full court pressure by Iowa. Bardo to break it across for Illinois. I think what Iowa has to do, the mistake they're making on this press is when they throw it into the big guy, the wing defender is trying to double team the initial pass. They're beating him down the sideline. The wing defender has got to guard that guy down the floor. Lorenzen the rebound on the miss by Altenberger. This is Jones. Marble nearly had it taken away by Kendall Gill. Clears to Jeff Moe. Now the Hawkeyes go into their setup offense. They do a lot of movement, don't they, Steve? They try to weave quite a bit, moving people in and out of the pivot position down there. Gary Wright trying to force the pass and the kick is called. You know, you'll see right down low, then you see him outside, and they do the same thing with Lohas, they do the same thing with Ed Horton. They don't play a regular low post type offense. Yeah, it's a good observation. What that does, and we talked about this a little bit, it tires the defense out, particularly the big guys who have to play wing defense. They have to play the top of the key. They have to fight for position down low. It takes away defensive help. It'll, it'll uh, create some layup situations. And it's one of the big reasons why they can hit the offensive board uh, because the big guys end up being out of position. Bardo looking for help and finds it in Kenny Norman. Now Bardo out of the point. 8.25 left to go in the game, and Illinois leading it by 13. Down low, Norman on the turn. Gary Wright the rebound. Here comes Jones. Iowa still has an opportunity to make a run, but they better start soon. I would, I would look for... A in fact, now it's going to look like I looked up, but uh, Armstrong's got to get back in the ball game. I think he's the one that creates tempo for this team. Jeff Moe on a three-point bucket, and that gets Iowa right back in it. Down by 10. The big basket for Moe, but I, I really believe they need Armstrong in. He's the one that pushes the ball down the floor most effectively. Armstrong is back in the lineup for Iowa. Full court pressure, and per usual, the inbound Kuyava. Bardo gets it into the hands of Weisinger. There you see it. There's a trap. Lowhouse, guilty of the foul. Lowhouse helping out of the double team. His second personal foul. One and one opportunity at the line for Tony Weisinger. The 29 points by Weisinger ties the team high watermark this season for an individual play. Who is that statistician over there? My goodness. I'll tell you what, she's the sharpest I've seen. Tony Y at the free throw line. Hey, the truck's not doing bad either. They have the same note we did. <laughs> I think they're getting it from the same source. Weisinger. Missed his last free throw. Connects on this one. The I'll tell you, is 11. I, I mentioned this in the Northwestern Illinois game. It's been a while since I've done Big Ten League games. I, I've forgotten how physical this league is. Why? Even after the, the free throw, Weissinger is going to get pumped um, by Armstrong, keeping him off the board. Two out of two at the line for Tony Wise. 7.55 left to go in the game. Fighting the line eye, leading the Iowa Hawkeyes by 12. You're watching Big Ten basketball on the Big Ten television network. Tell you what, the shooting percentage for Iowa is getting a little bit better. It was down around, around 41% earlier. It's up to 47%, but this team normally shoots very well from the field at 51.6. Well, it's a function of a couple things. Uh, the defensive pressure is beginning to take a little bit of its toll. Uh, additionally, the offensive pattern has created some layup situations. The line eye back on the floor. There is the Iowa huddle. Illinois on top and in command at the moment. Wayne 
Harvey and Steve Grody at the Assembly Hall in Champaign, Illinois. The Iowa Hawkeyes second ranked in the nation on the downside of the scoreboard at the moment. These are the Hawkeyes with the dark uniforms on the attack. And Illinois into a 2-3 zone lane, the first time in the ball game. Armstrong from deep. Lowhouse had the rebound for a moment. It was tipped away, and Cody Wise cleans up for the fighting Illini. Weisinger. Picked up by Gamble. He's had an outstanding night as Cody Weisinger. 29 points so far in the ball game. We still have 724 left to go. This is Doug Altenberger. Good feed to Yama. Nice take in Lowhouse. Back outside Altenberger. Good decision making right there by the big guy inside. Norman the snake on the turn. Barton cleans up on the board, lost the handle, but did not dribble. Now here come the Hawkeyes. Armstrong fires and connects. And I'll tell you what, Armstrong, that's the third occasion where he's just brought the ball down the floor, made a good move, pulled up and hit a big jump shot. The lead has shrunk to 10 points now for the fighting line out. They led by 17 of the half. I've been very impressed in the second half on a couple of cases when I was tried to make a run. Illinois has come up with a couple big baskets and, and stopped the charge. Hawkeyes can cut it to eight. This is Horton. They tie up Marble on the rebound. Guyava Marble. Jump ball indication. And on the alternating possession, it'll belong to Iowa. So often you see in a ball game when a team that has the big double-digit lead, if they are unable to put the opponent away in the second half, they are susceptible to a change of momentum. I feel like Illinois, uh, just like they were when we did them against Northwestern Saturday, is in that same position. They're getting a little tired. The defensive pressure has be, uh, begun to take its toll. And I think they are in somewhat of a susceptible position right now. Iowa trailing by 10. Six and a half minutes left to go in the game. You're watching the Hawkeyes on offense. I think the other point needs to be made is uh, when you have been trailing the entire ball game, you like to take the lead with just a couple minutes left in the, in the game. That way you don't have to sustain that effort over a long period of time. You can ride the momentum uh, through the end of the ball game. Altenberger thought he had it for Illinois. Iowa basketball. The other thing we're seeing here is the fighting Illini playing more zone in the second half as it wears on. Is that a result of foul difficulties, or is that a result of getting tired and playing that man-to-man -man defense that you, you just can't play it as well? Lou Henson told me that they would play strictly man-to-man -man in this ball game. I think that they're a little bit tired. That's why they've gone to the zone. Foul, a blocking foul on Altenberger. And Horton will head to the line. offensively in this game. We mentioned earlier, I felt like he had to put the ball on the floor, be a little more creative, uh, score some points for his ball club. That's always a, a difficult call inside like that. And Horton shooting at 52% from the free throw stripe, a two-shot foul. Yeah. Iowa's got it back. Iowa with a deficit, though, to nine. Tom Davis watching on the Iowa bench. Again, you saw the Illini break the full court pressure, but no need to go to the hoop, Steve, because they, they can afford to work some time off the clock. Well, the other thing is, is the quicker they shoot the ball, the more time they spend on defense. You, know, you can rest a little bit on offense, you know, take 40 seconds, relax a little bit, run some time. You, know, you control this game right now with a nine-point lead, five minutes, 30 seconds to play. And they are taking some time here. Ten to go on the shot clock for Illinois. Weisinger starts up the offense. Altenberger guarded by Marble. Inside Kenny Norman. The snake double team hammers it all off the glass. Six second half points for Kenny Norman. The lead 11 now for Illinois. Mo puts up a wild call. I don't believe it. Boy, I'll tell you what. You know, he, he missed the pass. They had Horton posted up low, wide open. Uh, takes a difficult shot, maybe a poor decision, but difficult it works out for shot. him. <laughs> That's an understatement. Here is Norman, back outside of Weisinger. Again, they'll try to work the clock just under five minutes to go in the game. And I'll tell you, they're going to the bread and butter right now when the going gets tough. 19 points for Kenny Norman, eight in the second half. Armstrong on the drive. We got a foul before the shot. Foul coming up before the shot by B. Armstrong beginning to play more of a role. Kendall Gill picks up the free the uh, foul. 
Larkin. Watch it again. There's the, uh, there's the shot by Jeff Moe. Can you believe that? I don't even think he saw the rim. He just threw it up in the general direction. Of section C44 to found the hoop. Well, Moe's a great spark plug off the bench, and I think you need a player. Every team needs a player like that, a guy that's real hard-nosed uh, and plays with reckless abandon. You know, I think that Jeff will play better if he learns to not play out of control. Uh, so Four to miss at the line. Armstrong is three of three at the charity spread. There's Lou Dolson at this moment as his team now has its lead. Flight down to ten. Lou Henson at Olson. Thinking of a Lou Olson from the Iowa day. Well, Lou Henson can't be happy with this last offensive possession for Iowa. He's playing zone defense. They made a basket, and Armstrong was still able to get the inbound pass, drive it down the floor, and take it close to the basket. That should, you know, that should not happen against the zone defense. There's the other game story there at Purdue, Michigan, or rather Minnesota training Purdue. Steve Sadie's got an excellent club. Weisinger breaks it across. comes after you on the offensive board and like I've never seen a team. This is a great, great move by Marvel. That move creates uh, a defensive situation where they need some help. And that's just a tough call right there. They called it on Kuyaba, said he bumped him. It's either going to be a foul or a traveling situation. Gary Wright connecting on his first. He'll have another. Senior from San Bernardino, California. Transfer from USC.